John here, guys, and today we're saying hats off to the new Racer X Twig XL. What's a twig? Everybody, a twig. I good. This is the Stretch X version of this beefed up extra large twig that will allow you to expand your FPV horizons and create something that is very familiar and yet very unique. The three inch class has been a very popular one for many, many, many years. And some of the latest offerings have been particularly good, um, especially something like the Diatone GT349, which combined a three inch with incredible speeds. But as of late, the toothpick and the twig have started um, a resurgence in micros that are able to spin a three inch prop, but still have that super low weight that gives you that extra safe feeling uh, when you're flying about. But is there a middle ground that can allow you to have some of the best of both worlds? And that's what the Twig XL um, wants you to explore and help answer some of those questions. So let's go over the build specifications of this Twig XL. As you can see, it is three inch. It has the Beta FPV 20 amp AIO um, board. It's not a stack, it's a single board that I reviewed on the channel. Um, I'll leave a clip, uh, thing in the corner to be able to check that out. In addition, I am running the Emacs RS2 1306B in 4000 kv that's right i'm going to be running 4s on this thing um, i am powering the video system with the eSheen nano vtx paired with the runcam nano 2 camera uh, one of my favorite micro cameras and an xm plus receiver inside of the canopy now the twig xl is all about versatility um, they will have mounting hole options for your twig sized boards uh, in there as well as 20 by 20 to accommodate those who prefer the more stouter solutions if you're going to go with a very large motor. Now for this size um, board, I'm kind of going for a lower weight. I've actually run these motors before on an Acrobrat and they perform really well. So I wanted to know just how well they would do on a very super light frame like this. I'll put the weight on the screen up here. Now I am using the included HQ 3x3x3 three by three by three props. These are very high pitch. So allow some great grab and a lot of really aggressive maneuvering and as well as some high speeds. This has a lot of get up and go. And normally this would be considered kind of a smaller motor, but because the weight of this entire package is so low, it performs really a lot closer to something like that diatone while saving about, I don't know, 20, 30 grams. Um, and because the weight is so low, um, you do get some of those worries to be gone. In addition, you worry a little bit less about breaking things. Um, and of course, the arm guards, I've left them installed on the front so that you can get a good image of what they are and uninstalled on the back so you can still see what that arm shape looks like. Um, some other cool notes about this thing are that the pod has been enlarged to accommodate micro sized cameras and there'll be a version of this pod that can fit a lot of your hd solutions you can run a nicer camera like a micro eagle or you can also run something like a baby turtles run cam nano 3 or even a special pod that will allow you to run the tar sear um, the really clean edges of this lend itself so well to painting it up like this one has done for demonstration purposes just to see how awesome it looks when put together and you match the color of your motors and your pod and your frame in addition um, this is a first that i think i've seen these little tpu printed um, motor anchors 
they just slide over the arms, over the motors, and so really I'm not running any zip ties or, or electrical tape or gaff tape to hold the motor wires in place, I'm just using these, and it looks so fantastic. I'm, I'm not sure why no one else has really thought to include this with a frame, really, really great option. And as you can see, the pod actually attaches to standoffs that run outside of the whoop board. You see how that works right there, guys? And that really gives you some um, peace of mind because your pod is not on the same hardware that your board is. That'll help isolate and keep that safe in there. Since we are increasing the weight a little bit and the speed with these components, we wanna be able to isolate that central, um, all the electronics inside, and this does that quite well. The shape is reminiscent of the original twig, but of course this one is the stretched version. So if you've ever flown a really nice stretched X frame, you know that the handling properties are just a little bit different. And you also get very smooth flight by extending the rear props further back. So when you're flying at say if a 35, 40 degree camera angle like this that I have it set to, look how much distance you have between the front and rear props. That equals smoothness. Now don't do like I did guys. I actually forgot to install my strap while I was building this and I didn't want to just shove my strap in the holes. So what I did was I used the included um, battery sticky pad in there and just got a zip tie and put it to size. It's actually working pretty well for me, so I'll probably just keep using that. The batteries I'm using for this are some Pulse 650 milliamp 4S packs. Those are giving me a lot of punch, keeping the weight relatively low and allowing some great handling um, uh, with the, you know, it's, it's really a perfect weight for this setup right here. I believe with the battery, you're probably going to get somewhere right around 200 ish grams, maybe a little bit less, uh, maybe 180. I'll put the weight on the screen with the battery, but this combination just feels so good in the air. So take a look at the flight footage for some of these things. Um, this is just fantastic. This beta FPV 20 amp board is the real deal. I think I'm gonna be purchasing a couple of those uh, for some future builds. And these motors are just perfectly paired, guys. You know, if you really want 120 mile an hour speed demon, just go buy the diatome, but not everybody wants or needs that. I'm really liking the maneuverability of this. If I was to take both of those onto a track race, I think they would perform very similarly because you're not gonna be traveling 100 plus miles an hour on a track most of the time. This is perfectly fine. And because of that weight savings, I can feel a little bit uh, better about everything. I feel like this is gonna hold up to a, a, a crash a little bit better. Your camera and your stack has moved much further back, so it's not gonna be taking the brunt of that impact. And, you know, while sometimes TPU pods on five inch racers can crumble a little bit with the weight being so low and this thing be being designed so well, you can see how it's very rigid in the center, but it still has enough flex to be able to absorb a good impact while providing some really good camera protection. Outstanding, guys. I really, really love this one. Great job on this Racer X. Um, looking forward to all of the upcoming releases that are coming out um, by these guys. What do you guys think in the channel? What kind of motor setup and power electronic setup are you gonna put on your Twig XL? Are you going for the Stretch? Are you going for the True X? Uh, put down in the comments what you're doing. Thanks guys.
That's exactly what you just said! How is that even possible?